Hello everyone, welcome back to the shop. Let's dive back into the Iron Oak. The concrete base is curing and the trunk is now complete. Then comes building the limbs. We will be building three elements. Limbs, branches, all the way down to twigs. Look at a branch nearby you. Look outside your window, maybe go for a walk. Look at trees. And you notice how it goes into a trunk, it splits into limbs, and then each one of those limbs splits into branches and then leaves and it just gets smaller and smaller, infinitesimally smaller. It's a fascinating thing to study and I feel like I learned so much more about trees when I was commissioned to build one. The first step for these limbs is to bring up some steel. These bars of steel are the same exact bars that I've been utilizing for the trunk itself. It is that four and a half by three eighths flat stock. And it's nice to be able to utilize the same exact piece of bar because everything's universal. I went back and forth in my mind for a long time, deciding if I wanted to, you know, forge these bars out, heat them up and, you know, draw them out to that nice long taper, or do I cut them? When I'm cutting these with a flame, you know, oxyacetylene, if you go from one corner to the other, you end up with two long triangles. And that's what I ended up doing. When I'm cutting with oxyacetylene, I rarely use guides. I like to freehand everything so I can feel it. But since I'm having a 15 foot long cut, I actually took a piece of uh, square tubing as my guide so I can just pull the torch along as it glides through the steel. After these long tapers were all cut out, then it's back to Alice. She has been absolutely instrumental when it came to this build. Being able to cold form all of those, those big bars. And it's important to cold form them so that everything is very consistent. Now it's one thing entirely to bend a piece of iron like this, or like this, you know, the flat of my hand, I mean, this, this is the easy way and this is the hard way. It's another entirely to make them go in three dimensions. You know what I'm saying? So I could have a curve up here and then I can have it wrap around here and then dive back down and then curl back up to where it's very dynamic. These limbs have to be extraordinarily dynamic to create the illusion of natural growth. There's, there's moments that uh, having an extra pair of hands would be truly handy here in the shop. When you're holding a you know, 15 foot long piece of bar and you're trying to you know, tack weld it over here and your, your hand is at the fulcrum where you're trying to balance this, this stinking thing. It's a lot. It's almost like blacksmithing yoga, trying to, <laughs> trying to make these miracles happen. But with enough tenacity and enough you know, uh, fortitude, you can do it. I'm building this whole thing on the principle of like flanges where there'll be you know, six bolt holes that will hold these things together. 
um, will to help me install and uninstall these things. So when you see me tacking these limbs together, it's on the, the, the pieces of plate that is bolted to the trunk of the tree. There's so many techniques uh, that come to bending this iron. Um, you know, Alice is great for that real heavy stuff, but for the finite little adjustments, it's great to just be able to take it to the anvil and do it the old way. Either it be over the horn, over the shelf, wherever it might be, I'm able to just control this material perfectly over the anvil. Now these are, I call them snipes. I've heard them called a million different things. You know, bending wrenches, uh, bending forks. These are really amazing things to be able to bend iron uh, in the way to where you have all of this leverage at your disposal. It's not always that you're on top of a 12 foot ladder trying to coordinate everything. You know, use your balance, not try not to fall and wind up in a big pile of iron, you know, down below you. It's a little hairy, but hey, if you're not in a little bit of danger, you're not having any fun. All jokes aside, it's super important to be safe. Um, I do every precaution possible when I'm on top of the ladder, doing these really improbable things, either welding or trying to bend material. Um, it's really important to be safe, so if you go try anything like this, please don't go falling off any ladders. There's a lot of trial and error when you're you know, taking all six of these beams, the, pr the primary beams that are gonna construct the, uh, the limbs themselves, to just really anticipate the curves. You want, you want to create the illusion of flow. Think about maybe one time a, you know, a bunch of snow piled up on one limb or you know, maybe it didn't get enough sunlight so it grew in a certain direction so it could start capturing a little bit of that light. You know, there's signs of struggle in nature. You know, if you study a tree, you can see its lifespan there before your eye in this like beautiful thumbprint of its, of its just lifespan, it's beautiful. A deeply meaningful moment on this sculpture was 
beginning to stamp the uh, all the tribe names on each limb. There's a reason that there are three limbs on this tree. You see, the history of the uh, the mission of San Antonio, it uh, has to do with the Salinan tribes, and it was amazing because during the design of this of the sculpture, they were able to sign off. It's their history, and it's it's really a, a deep honor to be able to. Oh gosh, to immortalize them on this on this piece, on this commission. And I was able to stamp each of their names, each tribal name, into every limb. It was really special for me. Canopies are very efficient, you know, when you're building this thing. It's really fun too because it's very freeform, but there is a code. You know, you pretty much fill every little space. Wherever there might be sun to be captured, a tree, a branch, a limb will grow to it. It was a it was a, just a fascinating deep dive into just nature itself. Now, this commission, this project in general, is very unlike a lot of the uh, works that I've done in the past. It's actually quite abstract. There's a lot of empty space, which I'm really excited, especially at night, for play on light. You know, having uh, beams of light shining into it, through it, and behind it. A creation of steel and negative space. As an artist, I find it very important to step outside of your comfort zone and, and, and try something new. You know, like I, I've learned so much just through this one commission. I can't wait to take these lessons elsewhere. Who knows where it'll take us. I get a little bit of guff, you know, welding without gloves on or, you know, without leathers. I only do that when I'm really tacking. You know, when I'm tacking up, it, it's, 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 a, it's not that big of a deal. At least I don't think it is. But um, when it comes to really welding, all of that UV radiation, all that stuff, leather up, gloves, and, you know, protect yourself. It was weeks of just pure welding, burning rod. And it was very cathartic, really, you know, to lock this whole thing together permanently, forever. Thank you. 
Now that the limbs are done and the fractal of branches then spawn from them, the canopy is almost complete. Besides one primary element, which are the thousand leaves that are gonna adorn it and make it burst with green color. I am so excited for this next step to make this tree come alive. It's very apropos that it looks like a Halloween tree right now, barren and spooky. But pretty quick, we're gonna make the whole thing come to life. And I'm excited to take the journey with you. And as always, my friends, thank you for watching.